It's March 25th, 2009. We're in Gatineau, Quebec, at the Canada's at, at the roundtable called "What Role for Canada in the Americas," organized by the Canada Council for International Co Cooperation. I'm talking with Manuel Rosenthal from Colombia, and I'm going to ask Manuel to introduce himself and tell us a bit about what you do, please, Manuel, and, and why you came to Canada t today. Okay, I'm. Uh, I'm a member of the directorate, an elected member of the directorate of Polo Democratico Alternativo, which is the main opposition party in Colombia and a coalition of all the left democratic political parties in Colombia. And I come from, I uh, have been working with the indigenous movement in Colombia, in northern Cauca, that happens to be today the strongest peaceful social movement in the country. And you're here today for the round table and uh, to talk about the proposed free trade deal with Colombia. What, what do you fear or feel will be the effects of this deal? Well, uh, we are with Senator Jorge Robledo, a member of the Colombian Parliament for two periods at the moment. And uh, we fear everything about the free trade agreement and uh, we fear our experience with free trade in Colombia for the last 18 years without agreements and we know it will worsen once the agreements are signed, particularly because the free trade agreements have one principle, you re you, the access to cheap labor and resources at no cost. So it implies and involves necessarily the deterioration of working and living conditions, the, the dismantling of freedoms of r and rights of people and the destruction of the environment both in Colombia and in Canada. And we're particularly worried about the fact that uh, we understand Prime Minister Harper has introduced legislation into Parliament to get this free trade agreement passed, and he's violating his own rules, as he had at the very least established the fact that this agreement had to be tabled and discussed by Parliament for 21 days before being ag agreed. So as opposition to the agreement grows in Canada and in Colombia, the government bypasses all democratic spaces and is about to impose it against the well-being of our peoples. You mentioned that you have a good deal of experience with free trade without an agreement. Tell me, please, what you mean by free trade without an agreement and tell me what that experience has been. Correct. Since uh, 1990, not unlike your experience with the U.S. and Mexico with the NAFTA agreement, since 1990 the government of Colombia has introduced packages of legislation that allow transnational corporations to get into the country in conditions of tremendous advantage of scale and other benefits which allow them to dismantle the national industries, extract natural, national and natural resources from the country at their will, privatize uh, social services and pri uh, pri uh, public enterprises like oil industry, electric industry, hospitals, etc. And uh, we're increasing the costs and decreasing the accessibility to this throughout the country. And all these because it causes such concentration of wealth and actually the wealth leaving the country, it leaves people increasingly poor. So it leads to increasing social polarization and the poverty and misery that it pushes people to. In the case of Colombia, for example, directly and indirectly promotes narco-trafficking and the production of cocaine, for example, because if people cannot produce food because they can't compete compete with subsidized imported food, they are forced to produce coca and cocaine, the only crop that will sell in a globalized free trade market. So all these horrendous experiences we've had, if the tree free, uh, free trade agreement is indeed signed or approved, then we'll have these established permanently for, from here on. One last question. Colombia has a terrible reputation for repression of labor activism. Can you tell me your experience of that, of that repression, what your, the people you've worked with, the organizations you've worked with? Absolutely. I can tell you a personal story right now. I'm, uh, I was labeled in a national magazine irresponsibly and falsely as being linked to armed insurgency in Colombia. And the reason behind that lie is precisely to silence the indigenous movements uh, with which I've been working, precisely in the largest mobilization in the has country's history against the free trade agreement. So ways to silence people is to repress them. But then, of course, there are assassinations, there are uh, human rights violations that are systematic, and Colombia is the most dangerous 
place in the world to be a labor union leader or organizer. And in fact, it's easier to establish a gang of uh, crooks, criminals, or narco-traffickers in Colombia than it is to establish a, a, a labor union. I said I, that would be the last question, but I just want to follow up. What is the link between free trade and this kind of repression? Is, is there a direct link? Absolutely. It, it, you cannot achieve free trade without repression and violence. There are three components of free trade, to free trade. One is propaganda. You have to convince people of the lies, and it works all over through media and other strategies. Two, it's, it's the whole policy issue that we've talked about, including free trade agreements. And third and foremost in Colombia, the systematic use of terror in order to displace and dismantle rights. The specific example for Colombia. Colombia has the second humanitarian crisis in the world after Darfur. Four million internally displaced people from resource-rich territories in order to deliver them to transnational corporate interests. Therefore, if Canada signs a free trade agreement with this criminal government, it will become an accomplice to this criminal act.